GCSE Poetry, Love and Relationships. Sonnet 29, I Think of Thee and Poems to Compare It To. So thank you to the physics and maths tutor for allowing me access to their annotated poem and allowing me to use it in, their vid in my video. So this poem is quite a short one, although it is quite wordy, considering the time it was written in. I'm going to read the poem and then I'm going to talk about the annotations. I think of thee, my thoughts do twine and bud about thee as wild vines about a tree. Put out broad leaves and soon there's naught to see, except the straggling green which hides the wood. Yet, O oh my palm tree, be it understood, I will not have my thoughts instead of thee, who art dearer, better. Rather instantly renew thy presence as a strong tree should. Rustle thy boughs, and set thy trunk all bare, and let these bands of greenery which ensphere thee drop heavily down, burst shattered everywhere. Because in this deep joy to see and hear thee, and breathe within thy shadow a new air, I do not think of thee, I am too near thee. Now, the poem consists of an extended metaphor, so throughout the poem it talks about this woman's love for a man, yet it is either not unrequited love, but it is not known whether he likes her back. And this extended metaphor through a twining and budding vine that encapsulates a tree and takes over it describes and parallels how her love is encapsulating him and she's creating this sort of fiction ideal of him that she knows barely anything about. Now by, di by directly addressing the poem at her lover it sets the poem as a personal one initially and that just helps create the intimacy that we're looking for. I also want to point out that she used quite a traditional sonnet form which is suggested in the title anyway. Now even though this is not that popular during the era she was writing in, it shows that even though this love is quite um, unorthodox since women were not expected to have such passionate feelings and relationships, it depicts how the relationship is still traditional and still adapts the form of the sonnet and still is precious as a traditional relationship would be. She has thought about him so much when she says there's naught to see and when she says in sphere it talks about how her thoughts are presented as suffocating and enveloping her into this sort of endless area because sphere is also has connotations of never ending no beginning and no end and that parallels to her love for him she also uses onomatopoeia in burst shattered and this creates an idea that her love for him goes beyond just a feeling it goes in she hears it she sees it she feels it and she talks about a lot of the senses and through the sensory image we understand her depth of love for him. Now I suggest you take note of any of the other annotations that you see on the screen but now I want to move on to the context of the poet. So the poet's name, which I haven't revealed to you yet, is Elizabeth Barrett Browning. She lived from 1806 to 1861 and she wrote this poem whilst courting Robert Browning who became her husband eventually and is also a famous poet. Her father did not allow the marriage, however they married nonetheless and she was cut off from her family. So she was so deeply in love with this man that she cut off all of her family. That gives us a really contextual use of useful idea which we can include in our essays and unlike appropriate Victorian women she expressed her strong passionate love which I already talked about. Now I'm going to talk about some really good language structure and form essay points that I definitely recommend you including in your essays because they are actually telling you what the effect is as well as identifying what the language technique or the structure technique or the form technique is. So I did sort of go over this, but it takes the form of a Petrarchan sonnet, which is traditional. 
with two quatrains, so two sets of four lines, and one sestet. And each line employs ten syllables, five stressed and five unstressed. Now, what does this mean? What does this tell us? Well, through writing in such a traditional form, she's suggesting that the traditional nature of her love is timeless and endless. And, but however, however, she does break this form, which highlights how the unconventionality of her, her passionate love and the, how the love she feels is so intense for a woman suggests that there are ways to adapt traditional love but by keeping the love timeless anyway. Point two, talking about pronouns of thee and thy. Now these, again, reinforce that the poet, the poem is directed to somebody, but it is quite a traditional word, word of thee and thy, which was not used that commonly in that era. So by employing these, it further highlights and establishes how the love is timeless and goes beyond time and goes beyond the use of words. Point three, talking about the volta. Now a volta is a change in the po in a poem and in a sonnet, traditionally, there is a volta after the eighth line, which is used to change the tone or mood. However, in sonnet 29, it's actually found in line five. And this non-conformist attitude of the poem shows how she breaks tradition and highlights how her love is although very traditional in a certain sense it is also different and and passionate and much more there's much more depth to it than a lot of other relationships that were um, advertised at that time point four is talking about the rhyme scheme now the rhyme scheme is a b b c c B, B, C, D. So it's quite um, similar to the Petriarchan form. And these sonnets that are Petriarchan are usually centered on the perspective of love from a distance. So it highlights how there is a distance within her and him. And it sort of juxtaposes the idea that she's encapsulating him and so close to him, yet in reality, there is a huge distance from them. And point five, talking about the natural imagery and the extended metaphor throughout the poem. So the active words twine and bud have wild connotations and allude to an untamable nature of the speaker's love. And she refers to her lover as a palm tree, which suggests youth and prosperity. And the flower imagery is used to symbolize female sexuality. Specifically in that time, it was used as a colloquial term when talking about female genitalia they often talked about and purity they often talked about flower imagery yet in modern literature it has been subverted to symbolize female empowerment now i have two poems that i suggest you would compare it to if you were given this in a gcse exam and i have similarities and differences so comparing it to porphyria's lover porphyria's lover sorry i can't say that well um, both speakers have an unhealthy obsession with the object or their, of their affection, or at least are presented to have an unhealthy obsession. In Sonnet 29, the love is smothering and all-encompassing. However, obviously we know that in Porphyria's Lover, it's more um, in, do dominating and eventually, as you know, she dies because of it and that's how dominating he is. Also, Browning's speaker is equally transfixed and, is, and his possess possessiveness quickly turns nasty. So there's both a sense of possession in both poems. However, in Porphyria's Lover, there is a dominating and deathly sense to it, whereas in Sonnet 29, it's more love. In terms of differences in Sonnet 29, the speaker recognises the unhealthy nature of the relationship at the end, whereas in Porphyria's Lover, the speaker does not have any self-awareness and this is shown f through the final line and yet God has so agreeing that God agrees with what he's just done. Another poem to compare it to is Sonnet 29 and Love's Philosophy. So in terms of similarities Shelley and Barrett Browning both use natural imagery as a metaphor for romantic love. Both poems are too short and concise and this shows how the speaker's emotions are highly intense 
and short terms or yes intense would probably be the best word in terms of differences in sonnet 29 it appears that she realizes the error of her ways whereas love's philosophy the poem has no turning point it's almost like a persuasion letter and it's a continuation of the speaker's lust now in terms of which one is the better one to compare it to i would definitely suggest porphyria's lover because there's a lot more to say about it and both poems are set around in a similar era so there's the same sense of what's going on but thank you for watching now till the end if you found this video helpful be sure to subscribe and for more advice follow me at no waffle gcse on instagram there's a lot more videos like this and i also do gcse friend so stay tuned for that and thank you for watching